number one. Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders. Please mute yourselves when you are not asking a question. Please only ask one question at a time. No follow-ups or questions in multiple parts. And if you could please say your name and outlet before your first question, that would be appreciated. All right. First question goes to Salvador. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa, Christina, Celia, for doing this. And, uh, you know, you three have three different paths through Star Trek because Melissa has a completely new character. Christina has a character with some baggage in her name, although it's new. And Celia has his huge legacy to live up to. So I was wondering what, what kind of research did you do when you entered uh, this world to inhabit those roles? Sure, so the great I... thing about Ortegas is that it's like a brand new character. And so what I, what I really looked into was like, you know, the history of helmsmen and, and helms officers and pilots and navigators in Star Trek. And I'm always like, you know what, nothing's gonna happen unless the ship can fly. So um, I took that very seriously. Um, and they wrote this, this incredible character that's confident, skilled, and yet also is so confident that she's able to also really have this great rapport um, with her crew members on the bridge, even, you know, when we're in, you know, when we're in a, in a chase and when we're, you know, dodging around black holes and, and all sorts of craziness. And so um, I just kind of really let that guide me. And, and, and a big part of my homework was learning how the ship runs um, and taking that very seriously. Um, and then also having just really great camaraderie with my, with my crew, which is real because the cast is just wonderful to be around. And I think that comes off on screen. For me, um, as a new Star Trek fan, I, for me, I literally immersed myself in the original series and uh, Wrath of Khan as well. So anything that anything that had, and there's not actually that much on Khan, but um, I, I watched everything I could of him. Uh, and also watched Discovery, because obviously I wanted to know who we were working with. So I watched Discovery's uh, season one and two. Um, and then other than that, it was more, uh, well, actually I did ask, you know, friends and, and, uh, who were Trekkies, you know, first getting the script, I'm like, oh my God, I have no idea what any of these things are, these words mean. So that was another element of it. And then other than that, it was just delving into my past and seeing what I could bring up from my past and my life in order to, um, personalize that for La'an. Yeah, I was I had a a a wealth of knowledge about this character when I figured out who she was. I I really had I, I think the, the the homework of it was like deciding like when was the time to stop looking to other people for this character. I I had to decide like okay, I am now either learning too much and and getting in my head about her future when Yes, of course, her future is important, but the cadet that I'm playing, this young Uhura, she has no idea what's in store for her. And so I had to sort of receive a bunch of information and then throw it all out the window and, and have an understanding of like how she carries herself and things that are innately her, but then understand that the Uhura that is beloved in this franchise is the person that she's growing into. It's not who she is today. And so there are going to be parts of young Uhura that are sort of unrecognizable. And then as you see the experiences and the opportunities that mold her and the relationships that she has with this incredible crew that influence her, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a walk, it's not a marathon. I mean, actually, no, it's a marathon, not a sprint. There we go. And so it's 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 been awesome to know that this character has a wealth of information that I can fall back on if I ever feel lost, but it's also taking the time to personalize it and, and bring my own Celia-isms to this incredibly beloved iconic role. Thanks so much, great answers. All right, our next question goes to Kit. Hey everybody, Kit Stone, hey. the Black Cape. One thing I love about sci-fi in general is the amount of characters you could get in a series or a film. And what I love is that whether it's an alien, a monster or whatever, there's always someone you can connect to. The characters you're portraying, how different or similar are they to who you are in real life? I would say my, my character, one of the Break, on the breakdown, we didn't know it was Star Trek. Well, I didn't know it was Star Trek, but on the breakdown, it was, you know, chief of security or something like that. 
and uh, she has PTSD and da, 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 and all these things. And she's very, you know, she's very professional and a bit guarded. And I was, and I had been uh, diagnosed with recently bef- to the audition. Being, I had been diagnosed with PTSD, and I was like, oh, oh, I can kind of, I can do that. I can use that. Um, but I think, in a way, I, she, I, I love this the similarity that she's very um physical you know i i'm an ex-dancer i do parkour kung fu all that kind of stuff i have a a, a martial arts background um but also the fact that i gen i in general am quite a vulnerable person but i do put this wall up a lot of you know uh, if i'm very comfortable and close with people you'll see the real kind of like the full me come out but in general i there's an element of you know a wall i mean that we all put up right but i think deep down i think that's that playing with that vulnerability and the the um strength and uh hard shell of laan was was something that i found um very kind of it came naturally to me I like to say that Ortegas is like the cooler version of me in the future. Like if I had cooler future version me would be Ortegas. Like she's uh you know she's uh she she takes her work very seriously um and and does it really well. And uh I'm I was really excited to to be able to portray a character that is Latina. That's also that's my background. Um and so I flew, I flew a plane once I took one flying lesson. And so I was just like, now I need to like really look into that. But stepping into this role, like I was really big in the whole like how to fly a starship. Um, And so the great thing is that the writers and the producers, they gave us this ability to really like put ourselves into the characters. And so you see that throughout. And I think that also um, makes makes the characters and our interactions even even more real and genuine. um, Because you see how much we like we like each other genuinely. Um, but for me, yeah, it's just basically like everything that I would like to be Ortegas is. Um, and then in all those ways too, where she like, doesn't really wear her heart on her sleeve. Like she's been through a lot. She's a combat veteran. So I, I also have like a fight background a martial arts background. And you get to see that, um, in the episodes, which I was very happy that the writers were able to work all that in. Um, but you get to see all these kind of layers kind of, you know, fade away. And so for, for the audience, they're going to get to see all these different aspects of Ortegas as the season continues. Um, and we're right now filming season two. And so like super big things to come. Yeah. Speaking of season two, I think, uh, <laughs> so much of, uh, the, there are a lot of similarities between Celia, myself and Cadet Uhura. Uh, we both lost family in incredibly traumatic ways. We both, uh, 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 are very young in our field and are still sort of questioning like, how did we get here? How how are we going to navigate this space? And so I often say that like the writers definitely have one-on-ones with my therapist trying to find like <laughs> what of me can I bring to this character? But no, it's like Melissa said, we have incredible writers and, and this cast and this crew is incredible. And so you feel very safe. I feel very safe uh, being able to sort of tell stories that like even Celia hasn't really been able to share. And so it, it, it's incredibly cathartic and, and incredibly, um, uh, it's, it's incredibly humble, humbling, there's the word. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool to play a character whose um, life sort of uh, uh, imitates and, and, and lives in a space that is so close to your own because there are some times when I go home from set that I'm like, did I act at all today? Or did I just tell the truth <laughs> the whole time? Um, and so, yeah, the challenge for me has been very much that, trying to remember that I'm playing a character and not Celia, because there's so much of us that overlap and intersect. All right, our next question goes to Robert. Good afternoon, uh, Robert Latow, BSO Entertainment. Um, the question is for all of you guys. Uh, you talked a little bit about how you became immersed in the Star Trek uh, mythology and everything like that. Who are you guys' favorite OG Star Trek character? And how would you like your character to be perceived? And, you know, what type of memorable thing about your character that you think the Trekkies are going to uh, really remember about your performance here in, in this? Um, so one of oh, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was saying, I have a really easy one. Um, Uhura herself. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Melissa. <laughs> um, I was going to say uh, Commander Riker, which is 
funny because a lot of people like when Ortegas, even like before they knew I booked it and like, you know, the, the breakdowns had gotten out and fans got the breakdowns. They were like, this sounds like a Riker character. And so for me watching the next generation growing up, like I used to always, like I had a little bit of a crush on Riker. Um, and he was just like, you know, he was just like fun, comp uh, competent and, you know, like in charge, like things got done. Um, and so now to like, for everyone to be like, Ortegas is the Riker of the crew. I'm like, you know, you can't, like, how does that happen? Like, you know, so uh, I would say Riker. I, I would go with Spock um, because it's been, obviously because I have quite a close relationship with Spock in this season as well. Um, it's so cool to see, you know, the before, see Ethan create the before Spock. Um, and he's just so iconic, you know, I mean, even being a new Star Trek fan, everyone knows who Spock is, you know? So, um, for me, it would be Spock and to be remembered. I don't know how to, how I would like, I would like La'an's fierceness and her braids to be remembered. <laughs> All right. Our next question goes to Ashley. Ashley, are you with us? I think we've lost it, Ashley. I think we have. All right, our next question then goes to Rafael. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, guys, uh, Star Trek has always dealt with uh, diversity since day one. No, but uh, I wanted to know uh, from you guys living this experience, what it's like to see so many women in important roles and how does it affect on your performances? Sure, I think, I think one of the things when, uh, when the casting came out and they kind of announced the crew, there was a few people that they're like, wow, they're more women than men. And it was so interesting because I'm just like, I'm like, but the fact that like we're noticing that, like that should be a thing where we don't notice, you know? Um, and and I, think, I think the cast that they've assembled is, uh, again, I'm super biased because I love the cast. Uh, but the, they've assembled this wonderful cast where, where you don't even you don't even notice the fact that there's more women than men, more men than women on the bridge. Um, they've also done this really great thing with our with our uniforms, um, where you know we still have like the pants suits and we also have the tunics. Um, and this great conversation I had with Rebecca, where like Rebecca was like, you know, you should still be able to like fight and perform and be awesome in your in your Starfleet tunic as you will be in pants. And so there's this this great kind of like just blending of like we're all the same and different. Um, and then in terms of, uh, in terms of di diversity, I was really happy to be auditioning for a role of a Latina. Um, I'm Latina and, and, and to be able to kind of, to bring my own experience into that um, and then go to space. Like you can't, I mean, you, you can't, you can't beat that as, a, as an actor, as a person, like I'm, I'm living a dream here. Yeah, for me, I obviously I'm aware of of the of of how amazing it is that we do have more women than than men in the main cast, and but it wasn't something I was actually actually conscious of on set, and when even when we even when I found out the cast is so it was it's not something like Melissa said it's not something that. Um, it's kind of, it's just feels natural and normal, yeah. which is amazing privilege to have. You know, well, no, it shouldn't be a privilege actually. It should be that way. Um, but uh, to be able to have that, and I think, as you say, it's been from day one, it's all been about diversity. And, um, and I think, I guess, knowing that and watching the original series, it just felt normal that of course we're gonna have an, an array of, of men, women, everyone, everyone included in that um so and yeah and and likewise being uh from being chinese it's um extremely it's an amazing to have such a a non-stereotypical character to play i uh nichelle's history in the sci-fi community but also in the entertainment community she was one of the i'm pretty sure she was the first Black woman to play a role of non-servitude um, in television history. And the fact that that took place in the genre of sci-fi, I think is, is so groundbreaking. But um, I'm someone, uh, uh, I, I didn't think about the, the sort of, um, the, 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 the number of men versus the number of women on the bridge. I'm a huge fan of, uh, uh, of women leading. I think that's the way it should be. But uh, I am a, a it, 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 it's so exciting. Like it, it, it means the world to me to be a part of, of a group like this and to continue to 
uh, open doors for coming casts and and upcoming iterations of Trek and to to fall into line in this way, it it feels really, really cool. And I am excited for the rest of the world to get used to something that looks like this because Star Trek has been doing this for years. And the fact that people are like, how could this have happened? It, it, it The material has been here for several decades. And so it just feels really good to continue that history. Yeah, and the, and the bridge is really a representation of the world as it is. Yeah. Um, and so, and so that, that is, that is huge for us to be bringing to the screen. And for so many people who watch Star Trek growing up and now are like in, you know, who are, who are engineers and who are, who are working at NASA and, and, you know, who are sending, sending satellites and ships to space, you know, it's, it's a, you know, there's a, there's a whole history to it, but we're, we're, we're super proud to be a part of it. Small part of it. Great. Hey. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. Thank you so much, everyone, for your questions. Please say your goodbyes and make your way out of the Zoom room. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.